Good morning, Bunny. Good morning, Raffles. Have you seen it? What, the newspaper? Yes. Oh, no, tell me again. Great news. What? They've picked you for England. Really? Great news for whom? Oh, well, my phone, it can't be a surprise for you. They must have asked you already, but it's great news for me and for everyone else who's keen on you. Come on in, Bunny, and we'll have a cup of coffee to celebrate. Yes, they did ask me if I would be available, but I didn't actually know that I'd been selected. You didn't? No, not definitely. Well, aren't you excited? Well, they left me out of the first test. And got beaten by an innings as a result. I'm pleased they've repented. Let's put it at that. I should think they have. Well, their madness may follow a kind of logic. The first test wasn't Lords in brilliant sunshine. The second may give more help to a slow bowler like me. It's at Old Trafford and it always rains in Manchester. I'd play you rain or shine. Well, I'm not so sure that I would want to play rain or shine. Shine, I'm not so likely to do well and half the pleasure of it is doing well. Oh, but surely the pride in playing for your country. <laughs> Did you see that thing in the Times the other day? New poem by that man Kipling. No. No? Oh, it's marvellous stuff. You know that fellow really can write. I've got it here somewhere. It's called, um, it's called The Islanders. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, that's it. That's the one. Right. Yes. Listen to this bit. Then perhaps you'll understand why I'm not jumping up and down in childish glee at being selected. Now listen, listen. Then ye returned to your trinkets. Then ye contented your souls with the flannelled fools at the wicket, or the muddied oafs at the goals. I read the correspondence that followed it. I agree with the people who said that team games help to form character. Do you? I agree with Kipling. I never run up to the wicket now without saying to myself, flannelled fool. <laughs> but you're going to play. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I mean, I should try and get my satisfaction out of being a cleverer flannelled fool than the others. I suppose there's some merit in that. And in representing England. Oh, you know me, bunny. I'm as patriotic as you could wish. I'd only rather it wasn't the Australians we're playing against. They're too much our own kith and kin. There's no pleasure in beating them. If you do beat them. It's how much more fun to thrash the jarring Germans or the dull as ditchwater Dutch. I'd give a thousand pounds if they played cricket, especially after the way they've been behaving in South Africa. I really believe you would. Oh, certainly I would. If I had a thousand pounds, that is. And I can't think of anyone I would sooner take a thousand pounds off than one of those hamburger Rotterdam financiers who come over here and do our own shady bucket shop proprietors out of business. Raffles, that was almost a political speech. I feel very strong on this point. Is that why we are going to rob Meinherr Vanderberg? Yes, frankly it is. Well, that and the hope of a rich hall to set us up through the summer. And where else in England is one likely to get such a rich hall as in the house of a Dutch millionaire? The only thing is... Ah. Sorry, Bunny, I haven't given you that coffee, I promise you. Oh, oh it doesn't matter. I was going to say it. Hey, wait a second minute. No, Raffles, listen. What? No, no, um, I'll have the coffee afterwards. I, it's only just struck me. Out with it. What date is the second test? Uh, 16th, 17th, 18th, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And what date is the Vanderburg wedding? Thursday the 16th. Oh. And you do realise, of course, you can't be in Manchester playing cricket and in East Molesey, stealing the wedding presents at the same time. You're absolutely right. Of course I can't. It is your patriotic duty to play against the Australians. It is also my patriotic duty to burgle Dutchmen. <laughs> yeah, but not so much. The distinction is a fine one. With the test, it is your public duty. You must beat the Australians publicly for everyone to see. But what will be public about the burglary? Well, nothing, I hope. Exactly. It'll be merely a private satisfaction of a private xenophobia. What was that? Morbid hatred of foreigners. What's morbid about it? The distinction is clear. I wonder if we can get Van der Berg to change the date of the wedding. Not he. He sent out the invitations already. Well, it's damn unfair. I was relying on him to support us through the summer. Yes. Now he's got to muck the whole thing up. Pity he's not an England selector. He could have arranged it. Well, bang goes East Mersey. Not necessarily. But if I can't be there and you've said yourself I can't. Somebody else could be there instead. Well, who for heaven's sake? Me. You said yourself it's a one-man job. Well, yes, I know I said it, but... You thought the one man would be yourself. Yes. It, it's not that I doubt that you're capable of taking my place, but... But what? Well... Well, what? The fact the is... The fact is what? I doubt that you're capable of taking my place. Thought as much. Well, then you were not surprised by my saying. No. You understand, I don't mean to reflect on your abilities, only on your nerves. It's my nerves are as strong as anybody. I do make a pardon, sir. Your nerves are strong enough to frighten the waiter. But it is not a question of strength. It is a question of coolness, coldness, which is a matter of temperament. Your temperament is hot. It is not. Emotional, impulsive. Absolute nonsense. All right, then. Prove to me that your nerves are as cold as ice, as cold as cold steel. Certainly I will. How? 
You will summon the waiter. You will say to him, Waiter, I'm sorry to say that I frightened you just now. Will you please bring us another bottle of bubbly? Is that all? Yes. Easy. Waiter. Uh, yes, sir. Waiter, I frightened you just now. Uh, yes, you did, sir. Will you bring us another bottle of bubbly? I'm sorry to say. I beg your pardon, sir? I said another bottle of bottle. Uh, yes, sir. There. Yes, sir. It would be the chance of my criminal career. You really are eager to have a go, Miss Anjou. I insist on having a go, and there's no way you can stop me. But on Thursday the 16th, I shall be in East Mosley. Whether you like it or not, so you better like it. I shall make a plan and proceed according to plan. I shall work out every little detail in advance. I shall memorize everything, like the times of the trains, and I shall go over every inch of the ground 15 different ways. Coolly, coldly. Waiter, another bubble of butler, please. The train left Waterloo at 1.50 p.m. There are five coaches. The engine is a 55 ton 442 tank designed by William Adams. The guard is hatless. What time do we arrive? I, I think it's 2.32, I, I think. Thank you. 2.30. Now, how did you get the idea of robbing Mr. Vanderburg? You don't move in financial circles. No, but Mifence does. <laughs> you talk about him as if he were your tailor. Well, why not? Mifence, my tailor. They're both tradesmen, one buys the other sells, that's all. Well, how is your fence connected with Vanderburg? Well, he isn't. But there is an old established connection between my fence and the burglary insurance company of Cheapside. They sometimes find it more... Burglary insurance company. <clears throat> I was saying, they sometimes find it more profitable to give him a good price to buy back the loot rather than fork out the full value to the poor chap who's been burgled. Did he find out what the wedding presents will be? Well, no, of course not. We know this sort of thing. Silver and gold, diamonds and emeralds. A couple of rooms for. Now, who will be in the house guarding the presents? Uh, nobody but Vanderberg, his wife, daughter, a couple of servants. Daughter? The one who just got married? No, 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 they've got another one, younger one. The bridesmaid, not the bride. Oh. The bridesmaid. <laughs> nobody from the burglary insurance company? Well, apparently not. They offered to send the detective, but Vanderberg didn't think it would be necessary. Good fellow. Yes. <laughs> so I thought if it was me and I was spotted in the garden or prowling around the house and I was challenged, I'd say that I was a detective from the burglar insurance company, sent down just to make sure that everything was all right. It's an idea. I'll do the same. Well, if you must. But don't expect me to act on every one of your suggestions. My dear Bunny, I don't expect... So anything? No, I was going to say, with Van der Berg, who has a heart condition, his wife and small daughter and a couple of aged retainers, well, I mean, we haven't got much opposition, have you? So you expect... Victory! Triumph! Glory! Profit. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Finish my work. Will you play croquet with me? No, I can't. I have a thousand letters to write. Letters? What letters? Thanking people for their Oh, presents. yes, but I must know them now. I shall have no time at all for myself on my honeymoon. And you must have lots of time for yourself on your honeymoon. Of course. And for Peter? And for Peter, too. It is the same thing. Is it really? Of course it is. It says so in the Bible. Man and wife are one flesh. Yeah. That always makes me think of, of a butcher shop and carving knives. You are not romantic. Well, I don't think it is very romantic to marry a businessman. I love him. Oh, how can you? He is not a very good businessman. But he is rich. Only because his father is rich, the same as us. I suppose that will do as an excuse, but I think I would like him better if he were not so rich and... And he played cricket, for instance. Cricket? Why cricket? No reason. I don't know. Oh, they look so beautiful in white on the green field. Nice looking girls. Hmm. The younger one is older than I thought. Which is the younger one? Well, in the blue dress, obviously. Oh. But they're both in. The younger one in the blue dress. Oh. 
I should think the best way into the house is through the conservatory. Now, which of you is going to help me? Don't you, you are not doing anything. Oh, Mother, I've got all these thank you letters to write. Oh, Nitya, you can help me then. No, I can't, Mother. All I want is someone to go to the list of wedding guests with me and tick off those who have accepted. I'm sorry, Mother, but I have to do my practice. It will not take a minute. I have to do it before Father comes home. You know he doesn't like it. Why do you do it then, when you know he does not like it? Because it may be necessary. Seen enough? I think so. Let's go. Um, I'd say 1.30 in the morning would be about the right time. The happy couple will leave early, of course, but I should think even the keenest party girl will have had more than enough by 1.30. And that'll leave just the family? Yes, tired out and rather full of the lush, as my vulgar friends would say, ready to sleep like proverbial tops. Good. Now. Make sure all the lights are out upstairs in the bedrooms. Right. They may leave one light on downstairs for fear of burglars in the belief that the light will keep you away. But it won't. Just creep up to a window and have a look first before you actually break in. Oh, yes, I will. Yeah. Huh. That's it then? Yes. Uh, not that you would fear anything, but you have nothing to fear. Go now. Right. Nitya, where are you? Here. Come and help me, please. I'm busy. What are you doing? I'm practicing. It's a slow bowler's weather, but I need the luck. I'm relying on you to skittle out the Aussies. And I'm relying on you to make mincemeat of the Duchess. Never fear. I will. Only one thing. What? Promise me not to take a revolver. Why not? And what you take, I'm afraid you're the chap to use. You mean you don't trust me? Here are my keys. There's an old life preserver somewhere in the bureau. Take that if you like, but not a revolver now. Promise me. Then rope me round my own neck for once. That's just why I don't want it to be. All right, I promise. Thank you, Bonnie. But whatever I do, Raffles, I shan't give you away. And you'll find out I do better than you think and I'm worth trusting more than you seem to want to or I'll know the reason why. Not so loud, Bonnie. Keep your voice down. People may hear. Let them hear. Tomorrow night you won't be on stage or anywhere near it and the understudy will be playing the lead and you'll find out how well he's done it. I hope you're right, Bonnie. Oh, good. Take it, spam your hands. Well, I must catch my train. Otherwise, I'm going to see my restaurant car. Thank you, Burgess. Thank you, sir. Bye, Bonnie. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, Rat. Didn't mean it. Come in. What can we do for you? 
Perhaps shoot you. I am a very good shot. No. Who are you? A burglar? No. I'm a detective officer. From the police? From the burglary insurance company. The burglary insurance company agreed they would not send anyone. They agreed with you, but they sent me just the same to make sure to keep an eye on things. Oh, is that so? Well, I'm sorry you saw me. It's a mere matter of routine and not intended to annoy anyone. I, I propose to keep a watch on the place all night. It's our usual practice. But I own it wasn't necessary to trespass, as I have done. I was going round the house, testing the doors to make sure they were fastened all right. This door wasn't, so I opened it and came in. And now I'll go out again with my apologies for having disturbed you. Stay where you are! I don't want to intrude. You don't look like a detective. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that. Why? There'd be no point in my being in plain clothes if you could recognize what I was. Mm, there's something in that. Yes. You look like an amateur, not a professional. Well, how should I have been dressed? Inverness Cape and Deerstalker were not all Sherlock Holmes, you know. No, I agree with you. I think we will go into the library. Here is too near the garden. That way. Oh. Go on. Beastly dark. Go over there. I hope I can find my way. Do not try anything. I can see quite well enough to shoot. Well, these are the wedding presents, eh? We're supposed to be guarding. These are the presents which I am guarding. Yes, well, I meant. Go into the library. That way. Turn up that lamp. Can you give me a cigarette? Yes, of course. No! Oh, I'm sorry, I thought... Just take one out and throw it to me. Oh. Don't you trust me? No. You will explain to me how you can be a detective with an insurance company when your accent is unmistakably public school. You say beastly as only a gentleman can say it. You carry a silver cigarette case from which you smoke Sullivan cigarettes. Your hat is made by locks of St. James and your boots are by lobs. How do you know? Do you deny it? Of course I do. Explain. Quite simple. They're the best at making boots. No. Explain how you are a detective. Oh. Well. Well, I fell on hard times, didn't I? And I thought it'd be rather exciting, catching burglars and so on. Tell me, is it not usual for detectives to carry a card or a badge from the company that employs them to prove their identity? Yes, quite usual, I believe. Hmm. Have you such a card? Uh, no. Or such a badge? No. Or such a letter, perhaps? I'm afraid not. Or anything of any kind to prove your identity? Nothing. Then I cannot believe your story. They, they didn't have time to make me a badge or, or to print me a card because they only hired me this evening and I came down here straight away. And I wasn't expecting you to hold me up with that revolver or I would have insisted on something. Um, you are in Cheapside this evening. Cheapside? Why? The offices of the insurance company are there. Oh, yes, Cheapside. Yes, of course. So uh, you bought an evening paper? Right. As a matter of fact, I bought all of them. How was the second test? You mean you don't know? No. We don't get the London evening papers out here. We have to wait till the morning to read the scores. Oh, poor thing. Yes. Well, I'm afraid I left them all in the train, but, but I can remember. Please? Well, it was marvellous. Well, well, not exactly marvellous. Not, not for England, but it was marvellous for me. Why? Being such a friend of his. Who's? Raffles. <gasps> Raffles? Oh, yes, he is marvellous. All oh, right. What did he do? Well, England won the toss. And decided to bat first, of, of course. It, it, it was a dry day and a hard wicket, and the Australian fast bowlers were right on the top of their form. They skittled the England openers and had five wickets down for 63. Oh, no. Then Raffles came in, fifth wicket down, and at close of play, he was still there with 78 not out, and England were 210 for seven. Oh, you're right. That is marvellous. Isn't it? <laughs> and you said that he's a friend of yours. Did I? Yes. A great friend, I thought you oh, said. Oh, well, it's not important. But it is important. 
I thought you were a criminal, but if you're a friend of Raffer's, then you cannot be a criminal. Oh, yeah, well, actually, I, I do know him rather well. Oh, I adore him. Yes. yes well, well I'm, I'm pretty fond of him myself. 78 not out and they picked him for his bowling. <laughs> yes, well, it's not the first time this happened. He's an all-rounder, of course, really. Oh, I do hope he gets a century tomorrow. Oh, yes. With any luck. Oh, he must have luck. The luck must be with him. Yes. It's strange. Foreign girl like you being interested in cricket. I've been here for years. Yeah, well, that would explain it. And in Holland, too, we play cricket. Do you? I didn't know. But not so well as in England. No, I imagine not. But I was talking only the other day to a friend about wishing the Dutch played cricket. Which friend? Oh, nobody. It doesn't matter. Was it H.A. Raffles? No, 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 it wasn't. It was some, someone else who, who didn't like foreigners, a silly fellow. Didn't like the Dutch. Which reminds me, I must ask you, is it a Dutch habit for young ladies to sit up all night guarding their sister's wedding presents? No, it is not so at all. No, then why do you do it? You understand you ask me what I'm doing here. I feel I'm entitled to ask you. Simply that I cannot sleep. Oh. Ever since I was a child, it's always been the same. If there's been any sort of excitement, like a wedding, a birthday or a party, I cannot sleep all night. I know this. So I stay awake and then perhaps two days later, I sleep for, ooh, 24 hours. But tonight... You won't sleep at all? Not a wink. Don't you think, of course you know better than I do, but, but it seems to me it would be a good idea if you went up to bed and lay down. I mean, I don't get undressed, uh, take, take off, if you don't want to, but, but if you tried very hard to get some sleep... Oh, no, it's not possible. You sure? Quite sure. Well, in that case, there's no hope, is there? No, nope, none at all. So what are we going to do? Stay here till morning. What was that? I don't know. There's someone there. Yes. The burglar. I'll go and see. Oh, be careful. No. I don't know how long he'll be as much as stunned. Oh, let's hit him over the head again. No, I... no, no. That won't be necessary. But, but we shall need someone to go for the police. Oh, you. What? I'd leave you alone with him at his mercy. No, I couldn't. I had my revolver. You, I couldn't dream of it. I'd shoot him before. if he tried to get away. No, no, he mustn't do that. So why not? I think in law you can shoot a man who's a burglar. Well, look, a fine detective I'd look leaving you alone with a great hulking ruffian like that. No, I'd never hear the last of it. Oh, but I had my revolver. No. No, it's against all my principles, against everything I've been brought up to believe in. No, weaker sex and so on must be protected. You must go for the police. Yes. No! Why? We don't need to either, as I just thought. What? We have a new telephone. We can telephone for the police to oh. come. Oh. Isn't that a good idea? Yes. No, it isn't. I've just thought again. We cannot do it. Oh, pity. Oh, the telephone is upstairs. The noise will wake my mother. She's a very light sleeper and she must not be disturbed. Well, still, if it would save us the trouble... No, 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 we mustn't. The telephone makes a terrible noise. It might wake her and frighten but her. But if it saves us the trouble of going no, all the way down... it's no trouble. I will go for the police. Thank you. Uh, I shall leave you my revolver. Yeah, well, I shan't need it. No, I, I shall leave it to protect you. Is it far from here? Oh, no, quite near. I shall be back in a oh, quarter of an hour. Good. Uh, will he stay unconscious for so long? Yes, well, well, if he doesn't, I'll soon make him unconscious again. Hmm. My advice is to shoot him. It's safer. Yes, well, thank you for the oh, advice. No, don't shoot him. All right, I won't. Oh, the noise will wake my mother, and she's had a very tiring day. Oh, and, and your father? Oh, I don't care so much about my father. Ah. Uh, see you in 15 minutes. Right. Bunny, my own familiar friend. And you weren't even stunned. Oh, thank God for that. Of course I was stunned. It was no thanks to you. I wasn't brained. What do you want to rush at me like a mad bull for? Well, I didn't know it was you. No. You've seen me in this kit. 
hit me before. You didn't even give me a chance to say hello. I thought you were in Manchester. So you wanged me over the head. Well, I had to prove it. I was a detective. I was going to let you arrest me and march me off in the general direction of the station, the railway station. Of course, it would have been very pretty. Yes, we can still do it. Oh, aren't you going to wait for Miss Vandenberg? No. It's a pity when you'd succeeded so well in persuading her that you were the detective of the burglar insurance company. Ow! She's not going to believe it much longer now. Well, I can't help that. Oh, all right. Come on, then. If we're going to move on, we can just catch the 12 minutes past three. Come on. Well, just like that? I left my clothes underneath a bridge on the way here. Now will you come on? You won't need the revolver. I shall come quietly. Why aren't you in Manchester at the test match? In a manner of speaking, I am. I'm playing the innings of my life. Did you see the papers? Yeah. I saw you were in at close of play, but I don't believe it was you. You have a double who plays your cricket for you. Then I'm afraid you didn't read your papers very carefully. I read all of them. Then you must have noticed it was rain that closed play at five o'clock. Tremendous cloud burst. Ground was underwater in ten minutes. Never saw such a thing in my life. Absolutely not the ghost of a chance of another ball being bowed. I changed and I was on my way back to the hotel before I thought of doing what I did. Why did you do it? I wanted to see you at it. That's all. I wanted to be near enough to lend a hand in case things went wrong, as they will do for all of us at the best of times. That's absolutely all. How are you going to get back to Manchester? We shall be back at Waterloo just after quarter to four. That gives me an hour at the Albany on my way to Euston, Another hour at Old Trafford before play begins. What's the matter with that? Nothing. <clears throat> Bonnie, when you're in the house... Yes? Posing. Rather brilliantly as the detective from the insurance company guarding the presents. Yes. How many of the presents did you actually steal? What? How many of them did you bring away with you? I'm afraid I forgot all about that, what with that girl and, and her revolver and pretending I was a detective and on her side. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm sure that if I'd have been in your place, I would have done the same thing. It's nice of you to say so. However, I was not in your place. So I did not do the same thing. I'm sure that... Uh, a lot of the jewels have gone on honeymoon with the happy pair, but not oh. these uh, rather nice, yes, emerald cufflinks. Hmm? Oh. And I cannot think what the bride was doing to leave this behind. Oh, yeah. oh and look, look, look. Here's something that I've been after for years. They make the most charming paper knives in the world. Yeah, oh, yes, and there's a, a gold cigarette case, yeah, just right for your smaller Sullivans. Oh. Oh, and there's, there's, there's something else. Now, just look at this. What on earth is that? I haven't the faintest idea, but I found it <laughs> absolutely irresistible. Tea and crumpets to celebrate our no less glorious victory over the Dutch. Hooray! And to celebrate the twin facts that we are famous again and in funds again. Who double ray? Do you know? I was gratified but mildly surprised at the value our friends put on those wedding presents. You mean apart from the things we kept for ourselves? Yes, as mementos, like the emerald cufflinks. Of a bad night that turned out well. A bad night in East Mosey. <laughs> Has it finished yet? What do you mean? I was thinking about that girl and her gun. Oh, yes. Very determined girl. I heard everything you said, you know. Nothing to be ashamed of, I hope. No, no. No, but you'll admit that the character you played then is now obviously a criminal. Probably a thief. Yes, I suppose so. But it doesn't matter. They can't trace me. Now, in that conversation I overheard... Yes? There was one thing you said that might perhaps help them to trace you. What? For heaven's sake, Raffles, what? You said that you were a friend of mine. Oh, yes, yes, well, that helped me at the time. She was suspicious of me till then, but no friend of yours could possibly be a criminal. 
What a splendid thought. Yes. Yes. And now that you are proved to be a criminal? Oh, my God. Ah, we must expect a visit from the police. What was that? The police, I should think. Are you a magician? No, no, no. I just timed it rather well. I had a card from Sergeant Holly of Scotland Yard. Could he call on me this afternoon at four o'clock? He is punctual to the dot. And you didn't tell me he was coming. You will enjoy your crumpets all the more. He'll stick in my gullet. Oh. What? I suppose we shall have to give him a crumpet or two. It's only civil. Would you excuse me a moment? We must never keep the law waiting. Good afternoon, Sergeant Holly. That's right, sir. Do come in. Thank you, sir. I hope I'm not interrupting you. No. No, I was just having tea. Leave your hat there. Thank you, sir. With a friend of mine. Money, I don't believe you know Sergeant Holly. No. Where is he? Sergeant Holly. This is Bunny Manders, a friend of mine, who is having tea and crumpets with me. How do you do, sir? Uh, will you have some? Uh, I'll have a cup of tea, thank you, sir. No crumpets? No, thank you, sir. Crumpets make it too cosy. Ah, Bunny. Isn't it going to be, uh, cosy? Well, that rather depends on you, sir. On me? On whether you're willing to give me information about those who claim to be your friends. I don't understand. Who claims to be my friend? Well, on the night of the first day of the second test match, sir... Aha! You are a cricket enthusiast. I am, sir. Ah, good. Dangerous game, though, cricket. Look at that. Just, would you, just look at that. Well, uh, on that night, sir, there was um, a burglary committed at um, East Molesey, Surrey. Far enough away. Uh, but the burglar, sir, in conversation, uh, claimed to be, uh, thank you, a close friend of yours. A friend of mine? Uh, no, thank you, sir. Uh, of yours, the eminent cricketer who was then performing in the second test at Manchester. Well, good heavens. Do you suppose I have friends who are burglars? You sure you won't have a crumpet? No, thank you, sir. Isn't it the other way round, sir? Do you happen to have any burglars who are friends? What? Well, forgive me, sir, but um, I have, if not lived, at least worked amongst the upper classes a great deal, uh, which is why they put me on this job. Uh, now, it is my experience with the upper classes that they, uh, uh, well, let me put it like this, they tend to be a good deal more free and easy in their uh, relationships and their acquaintanceships than, uh, uh, for instance, the uh, middle class would be. Uh, they're not so bothered about keeping up an appearance of respectability. Mm. There's something in what you say. What do you think, Bunny? Oh, yes. Though I must say this chap appeared to have been upper class himself. Oh, really? A public school, anyway. These days, to have been to a public school is no guarantee of belonging to the upper classes. Indeed, I know, sir. Are you an expert on sniffing out what class a man is? Is that why they employ you on these cases? <laughs> no, 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 sir. It's just that by manner of speech, all the yes, sirs, and thank you, sirs, go down well. Yes, yes. That apart, you were asking, did I have any friends who were burglars or burglars who were friends? Whichever it was. Yeah, whichever it was, sir. Yes. I don't know. What do you think, Molly? Hey? Oh, come on, you heard the question. Don't just sit there with a burnt crumpet on the end of your toasting fork. I'm sorry. What did you want to know? Have we got any burglar friends? Ah! Exactly. Ah. He doesn't know either. I thought perhaps he was going to say something, sir. Oh. Were you, Bunny? No. No. Then perhaps I'd better give you this letter from Miss Vanderberg, sir. From whom? Miss Vanderberg, of the family that was burgled. Hmm. Uh. Thank you. Uh, would you excuse me now? Of course, sir. Pretty letter. She's a very pretty young lady, sir. Is she? Will you be going down to visit her, sir? I beg your pardon? I do happen to know what's in the letter, sir. Oh, do you? The young lady read it out to me, sir. Ah. Can I give her any message? No. Thank you. I shall write to her myself. Well, in that case, uh, since I can't be of any help to you, sir, and you can't be of any help to me, I'd best be getting along. Always delighted to see the police? Very civil of you, sir. Would you give my regards to Inspector McKenzie? Yes, yes, I will, sir. Bunny, would you see the sergeant out? Yes, of course. Only too happy.
Achtung, Weißer! Das ist, äh, good day, Sir. You. Didn't you like him? Well, I didn't enjoy him. Ah. You have too powerful a conscience, Bunny. Yes, perhaps. I'm delighted to say that I have very little conscience and certainly not enough to interfere with my pleasures. I shall go down to East Molesey to see the beautiful Miss Vanderberg. I think you do not want to come with me. What, and be recognized as a thief? Ah, that would indeed be hard when you stole nothing. Yes. But you received some of the stolen goods. And I'm afraid you will have to give back the gold cigarette case. Oh, why? It has, for Miss Vanderberg, a sentimental value. Has it? As indeed, Miss Vanderberg has a sentimental value for me. You don't even know her. Ah! You forget. I overheard rather a long conversation in which she said and seemed to mean she adored me. Raffles, you're not going to risk anything. I shall go there as a flanneled fool. In England, there is no risk in that. And how long must we keep them like this? Only for today, madam. What is Mr. Riffles with Raffles, coming? Raffles, madam. Oh. Well, I suppose you know what you are doing. Well, we think so, madam. At least we think it's worth trying. Well, I hope you are right. <laughs> uh, so do we, madam. If you are wrong, will you apologize to Mr. Raffles? Not in so many words, miss. It is not a habit of the police to apologise. Of course not. Strange idea. We'll just sort of wish ourselves better luck next time. You think Mr. Raffles is a thief? Uh, we believe so, yes, miss. Who stole our wedding presents while he was playing cricket in Manchester. It was technically feasible, miss. And certainly he didn't spend that night in the hotel room. Oh, so you think he came here posing as a detective from the insurance company? Well, your description doesn't sound exactly like him, miss, but there is only one gentleman burglar in London, to the best of our knowledge, and that's him. I've seen Mr. Raffles' picture in the papers. They're not always very like. Well, we shall soon know for sure. Well, bear in mind that he may have been disguised. I shall know if it is him. I do not think I wish to meet you, Mr. Riffles. I shall go and lie down. Nettie, you can wake me when he has gone. Yes, mother. Well, I expect I shall be gone too. Goodbye, Mrs. Vanderberg. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Uh... So nice of you to call. Uh, one other thing, miss, uh, when Mr. Raffles comes. What? Assuming that he's not your insurance detective... Which I do assume. Well, as soon as we're sure of it, I shall leave. Or rather, I shall pretend to leave. Now, when I've gone, could you make some excuse or other and leave him alone here for five minutes? It need be five minutes. In fact, two or three minutes would do. Uh, why? Well, I have my own theory about Mr. Raffles, miss, and I'd like to try it out. What theory is that? Well, the technical word would be a kleptomania, an irresistible tendency to steal, even though the person is well-to-do. That's the definition in the dictionary. It's a disease condition, like alcoholism. Oh, and, and you think that Mr. Raffles is suffering from this condition? It is my theory, miss. <laughs> Absurd. Well, we shall soon find out if he's left alone with those presents for a couple of minutes. Here he is. Yes. I can tell you now, he is not the man. Would you mind looking closer? Whatever you want. But I shall not be able to say it is the man if it is not the man, simply to make the police happy. Mr. Raffles, uh, please come in. Uh, I, I think you know Sergeant Holly. Indeed I do. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, Sergeant Holly. He is not the man. Thank you, miss. Well, in that case, I'll go. Goodbye, miss. Goodbye, sir. Good day. I apologize for not being the man. What man? Oh, my burglar. A friend of yours. A friend of mine? So he told me, and... His voice had the ring of truth when he talked about you and about cricket. Uh, not about anything else. Did he seem an honest sort of a fellow, given that he was a burglar? He seemed a very innocent sort of man, given that he was a burglar. I don't think I have any innocent friends who are burglars. Oh, I 
I'm sorry to hear it. As I said in my letter, I hoped that you might help me to get the gold cigarette case back. Alas. Oh. It was my present to the bridegroom. I'm very fond of my sister and her husband, and I'd chosen the case with great care. I'm sorry. I hoped that you'd come to bring the case back. What can I say but alas? Um, why did you come, Mr. Ruffles? I found your letter irresistibly persuasive. Was it? And Sergeant Holly told me you were charming. Oh, so you came to see for yourself. Right. I don't think I was particularly charming to Sergeant Holly. But you confided in him. No, not at all. You read him your letter to me. No, I told him I'd asked you here, that was all. I apologize. Oh, why? I was almost jealous of Sergeant Holly. <laughs> I will confide in you. I shall try to deserve it. Sergeant Holly thinks that you were my burglar who said he was from the insurance company. I tell him you are not, he accepts this. But I can see he doesn't believe me. I am lying for some reason or another. However, Sergeant Holly has a second string to his bow. He thinks you are a kleptomaniac. If you're left alone with the presents, you will immediately steal some of them. So. I'm to leave you alone with the presents. And as soon as I steal one, Sergeant Holly will rush in and arrest me. <laughs> oh, yes. He's longing to arrest you. Sure he is. And it would be so marvellous to catch you red-handed. Without needing any evidence from you. Oh, uh, like all women, I'm unreliable. <laughs> well, we must give Sergeant Holly his chance. You must leave me alone with the presents. Of course. One thing. What? You will not show any sign of surprise at anything that happens. Not at anything. Right. <clears throat> oh, one thing, in case I have no opportunity afterwards. Yeah. Why did you not score a century in the test match? You so nearly got there, 99. You only needed one more. Couldn't you get just that one? Uh, well, I thought to myself, after that rain, this is a pitch to be bowling on, not batting, and I'd much rather be bowling. What are you doing here, you flannel fool? Use your brains in the very next ball, of course. Oh, out? Yes. Caught on the boundary. Mind you, if you'd have missed it, it would have gone for six. Can I have a question? Any? What's your name? Netya. Netya? Yes. It's so I can think about you. And you, of course, are A.J. Raffles. I know from the papers. Arthur? No. A.J. With amateurs, they give the initial before the name. I shall think of you as A.J. Thank you. And now I shall leave you alone.
raffles. What? Would you mind turning out your pockets? Why? I think you know why. I don't understand. I'm damned if I will. I shall have to search you. I, I don't know what you mean. You have no right to search me. I refuse to let you. I'm sorry, but I must insist. You keep your filthy hands off me. I haven't stolen anything. Come off it, Raffles. I saw you through that window pinching things. You'll regret this, Sergeant. What about that, then? A. J. R. Well, that's not all you took. Where are they? Where the hell? There must be somewhere. What's the matter, Sergeant? Can't you find something? I saw this man through the window, taking your things, miss. And he must have them hidden somewhere in his pockets. Well, how could he have? They're all here. What? Yes. They are all here. I'm afraid Mr. Raffles has been playing a game with you. Game? I let you make a fool of yourself, Sergeant, and you grabbed the chance with both hands. Did you tell him, Miss, that I suspected him of being the burglar? She didn't need to tell me. It breathed out of every pore of you. Mr. Raffles is not a kleptomaniac. He's a cricketer. And I thought I'd been batting for long enough and it was time I had a bowl at the other side on a sticky wicket and Sergeant... Oh, middle stump. Goodbye. Not a good sport. Well, at least, he didn't enjoy it as much as I did. Did you expect him to? No. Thank you for concealing your surprise. What surprise? Cigarette. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, if Sergeant Holly had asked me, were their voices similar, I would have to have said yes. The same accent, the same way of saying right. The same school, perhaps? Who's that now? I wonder who on earth can be sending me a registered packet. An unknown admirer of your bowling, perhaps? Ah, not unknown, but known. And to you too, Bunny. Who? I always liked the Dutch. Oh, her. Oh, her? A girl in a million. She has sent a set of emerald shirt studs and a card to go with them. Go with the cufflinks, which you have already. Which you have already. A girl in a million, all right. But dangerous. Ah. Uh, goodbye, Mosey. Goodbye, love. Tell you what. It seems a pity to break up the set. I'll toss you for it. Heads! Ha, 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 ha.